who knew there would come a time where Tinker is broken? Specifically, Tinker's support, because honestly, Tinker Core has been good quite a few times throughout Dota's history, but I don't think I can confidently say that there's a period in time, at least that I remember, maybe you guys can correct me, where Tinker's support is probably, almost definitely, one of the most potent strategies of the patch. Now, you might be saying, Speed, this is another one of those clickbait psycho videos that you always make. This can't actually be good. Okay, well, let me prove to you that it is actually good. In fact, it's extremely good and really easy. A lot of you watching this might be like, this is too hard. This hero has too many buttons. It's way too difficult. I can never pull this off. No, I understand you're 38 with kids. You haven't done exercise in three years, but trust me, you can still pull this off. It's quite easy. So let's get into it. On top of that, go sign up to the Gamely website, guys. I'm posting new content over there almost every day, and I'll see you there. Now, for starting items, we're gonna be looking at Zinku's build and his gameplay here. They just won a $500,000 tournament picking Tinker support. This is not a random pub I picked. This is extreme gaming against Team Spirit. Okay, let's continue. Two circlets, two branches, a blood grenade, sentry, three tangos. Pretty standard from there. You're gonna ship out another set of tangos generally. You don't have to as much on Tinker because of the reason why this hero is broken, which is March of the Machines repair bot his fast hit, which just recently got buffed by 50%. You heard that right. So what does it do? Well, when March of Machines is passing through an ally, it applies a non-stacking heal, so you can't like spam a bunch of marches to make it OP, a non-stacking heal over time. And every single time you get hit by a bot, it reapplies this four second heal. So it doesn't heal you just for four seconds, it heals you for four seconds as long as you've been hit by a new robot. That's what's important to understand. It's not like every time you hit the same robot, it will reapply. You have to hit a new robot. So it's good to know that, guys. And the reason why, I'll actually explain it in a second. So in the laning stage, first thing he does is he goes to trade with Mapushka, and you might be like, ah, this hero can't be that good at trading. Well, 310 movement speed, 60 base damage, uh, seven armor would beg to differ. You know who else has seven armor? I think Naga Siren has seven armor. She actually might have less than seven armor. So you put down the March of the Sheen, you're gonna trade with a five. It's really easy because when these March start to hit you, you're gonna notice he's healing. In fact, he's healing a lot. It's 15 per second. So the minimum healing, the minimum is 60. However, this ability lasts for six seconds. So realistically, you can get hit by the first bot, right? So that's four seconds of healing. And then the last bot. So it can last almost 10 seconds, which is 150 healing if you optimize it. Now I wanna quickly replay it. In order to optimize it, you actually have to follow the March and the Machine to the edge. Now, generally you're not actually gonna do this. It's not that practical but it is sometimes. So what I mean by that is if he wanted to optimize his healing on Zen Q here, he would actually have to follow this line of the march and continue to hit the back line of the bots all the way to like here. You would have you have to run in a diagonal line. I'm just telling you that so you understand how the ability works. You can actually use this strategy to maximize your healing in the lane as well. You run with the back line uh, in a diagonal straight forward line up. I tested it in the lobby, it, it actually works. And from there, it's pretty basic, guys. You just spam March of the Machines off cooldown. It is a really long cooldown. It's like 35 seconds, which is pretty rough. However, you're gonna use it about once per wave. It's gonna heal you up and your offlaner up, and it's also gonna push the wave extremely hard because it also works on the creep wave. So basically, this hero just makes it really, really hard to interact with him. And that's a good thing. You're not really looking to dominate the lane, even though you're pretty good. You can dominate some lanes. Maybe your offlaner is a really strong hero like a Viper, and you're not a, a Sand King against Monkey King. You actually can win those lanes just because of the raw healing you're outputting. And you'll notice he's just gonna use March almost as much as he can. XXS is gonna stand in the March, he's gonna stand in the March, and they're both gonna continuously heal to ridiculously large amounts of HP. At level two, not shockingly, he's gonna take Laser. There are some lanes where Defense Matrix is not bad, but for the most part, Laser at level two is the way to go. It's 75 damage, it's pure damage, which is nice. If you're against something like Monkey King, clicking Laser to make sure he can't actually man up is extremely high value, right? You could imagine why. And the reason why is because it's a 100% miss rate, right? For three seconds, literally they cannot auto attack. So you can also use it on the enemy support so they can't trade with you. Last thing I'd like to recommend for the laning stage, outside of the fact that you should max March in the machine, which is probably pretty obvious, is you want to unblock the large camp. You'll notice he actually did do it this lane and he's pulled it up to this point. I'm not gonna show you, it's pointless. Just know that it's good. And the reason why it's really easy to do on Tinker is when you push the wave all the time, when you're pushing every single creep wave, you have a lot of downtime, right? And when during this downtime, you should be buying one, two or three sentries during the landing stage to unblock the large so you can spam pull it as well as block the small so that they can't pull the small. And what's really crazy is how much Tinker heals at level three, right? Once you hit level three, the bots start to heal for 25 per second. And that's just a ton, right? This storm eventually starts healing up like crazy and it brings him from about 350 HP to around like 500 something, 
right? Because the end of the march keeps going. It's not like when the machines go away, you stop healing. It lingers for four seconds, four seconds. So Storm gains like 250 HP. I mean, come on guys, it's crazy amounts. Now, something to understand about the hero, you're actually really bad at setting up plays. It's the biggest weakness of Tinker support. You're not good at killing people. The reason why, I mean, basically you have to somehow keep them in March, which is generally unpractical in the early game. And so the main thing you want to look to do on this hero is TP mid and TP your safe lane to actually save and counter gank. This hero is incredibly good at counter ganking due to the missed chance of laser and of course the healing heal bots, right? So you notice here he TP's bottom, pops the laser on the Monkey King, drops the heal bots, heals up his Lina, and he's going to do the same thing in a moment. He actually uh, buys enough time for the Lina to live and she ends up getting gone on again in a moment from now. You'll notice she gets reinitiated re on by Team Spirit. He hits level four, pops the Matrix, which gives 80 HP. That's the main thing it does. It's 70 mana, 80 HP, status resist. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, but yeah, he buys enough time, gets the Monkey King really low. Unfortunately, Lena dies, but it's fine. He gets a return kill and he's feeling good. So for his next items, he bought Wanda for the Windlace and then Boots. And this guy's really, really greedy. And when I mean really greedy, he's really greedy. <laughs> like he, he bought no clarities, no extra blood grenade, basically no extra sentries, like no raindrops, none of it. And I honestly suggest the same. The reason being is you're not looking to dominate the early game on this hero. It's not bad, as I'm saying, it's not bad because you can really just walk up to people and heal them for like some stupid amount. Generally at this point, 350, uh, which is crazy. But yeah, you're really looking to just get to level six and eventually your later timings. Now, the reason why level six is so OP is mainly due to the fact that you can just refill the mid's bottle. Like he just starts doing this for the rest of the game. He's gonna buy two Null Talismans and constantly refill mid bottle. He be his mid, drops the repair bots because you can just do it infinitely because you can keep going back to base and gives the storm full mana and full HP. Then he goes back to base and you can basically rinse repeat this over and over again as he considers TPing bottom, eventually TPs mid. And you can do anything at this point in the game. This is where Tinker's a hard hero because you can opt to farm, you can fight, you can do literally anything. It's kind of like nature's profit and the reason why that hero is a bad winner. It's just kind of hard. It's easy to make the wrong decision. What I would personally recommend doing is farming a lot. Now, why do I say that? Once again, you're not good at setting up plays. You're really bad at it. So for the most part, I would be farming camps and continuing to refill my mana at base as much as I can so I can counter gank and do this over and over and over again until the mid game hits. And let's skip ahead now to the mid game. Okay, so moving into our first mid game fight, I wanna play this one from free camera so you can really see Zinku's perspective. At this point of the game, he's level six, nothing crazy. He pops his repair bots. Reason being, push the wave, heal up his clockwork a bit. The, the puck initiates because puck is a DD and they're feeling strong. However, the, the bots have started to kick in already, so the clockwork is healing like mad, right? You can tell. This guy's healing a lot. The storm is also healing. He's also healing, right? On top of that, everyone's taking a ton of damage from March of the Machines. He tries to save the clockwork, unfortunately, it's not enough, but him and the storm are actually healing up a very fair amount. He's going to TP back to base here, which in a moment from now, after he puts down one more repair bots, but he's gonna TP back to base and you can see that Storm just has like 700 health. In fact, a moment from now, Storm is full health. And just to go back so you can really see how this started, the Storm at the beginning of this team fight was like half <laughs> and then took an entire team fight. Yeah, so after this like set of nukes, he's half HP. And then even after continuing to fight, he ends it at full health. Now, when I said this hero can farm, I meant this hero can farm. In fact, he can take ancient stacks by himself at level seven. You actually can do it at level six, but it's pretty slow and I would recommend generally waiting, just continuing to make stacks. But yeah, he farms this by himself. You can laser the large creeps just to take less damage. Not that it really matters, the repair bots are going to keep you full HP and so yeah, it's pretty easy when you take no damage to farm stacks. After that, he's going to go back to base and of course you're going to continue to TP into fights. And if your team manages to stay alive, you can pop your E, right, which is just going to give them a barrier, pop your repair bots, and he's pinging like people don't even know, they kind of forget. He's like, bro, sit in my bots. Like, you damn clockwork, you can deward three seconds. Just sit in the bots and you'll be full HP. <laughs> and look, like, you just make your team have infinite mana. I can imagine pairing this with something like a Crystal Maiden, and then your team actually will have just infinite resources and you can just continue to do whatever you want. Uh, and your cores will almost never run out of mana or, or HP. Okay, and if this team fight isn't a perfect example of why this is just frankly broken, I don't know what is. Like, if I can't convince you with this fight, if ZinQ if Zin can't prove it to you, you're just you're just unable to be convinced, but okay team fight breaks out. Of course, you're gonna lead with March This is why it's easy. You do two things you pop March and you click defense matrix on the frontliner He clicks it on his storm here, which okay. It's one of the two frontliners Maybe it was better on sanking whatever 
He's going to drop the march, and you're going to refresh. Put zero priority on laser. The cast range is trash. Just use your two broken abilities. You don't need to laser unless a melee hero or, uh, sorry, an auto-attacking hero gets on top of you like a Phantom Assassin. Then, of course, it's a really good idea to click laser. But in this team fight, he's going to pop a second march, another matrix eventually onto the Sand King, and his team is just healing up like crazy. This is a Wukong's macro pyre, wall of replica, team fight, and his Sand King and Storm are just fine. I mean, they're standing in it. And eventually, towards the end of the fight, they're going to heal back up to full. I, I mean, come on, like, what is that? They just walked through a bunch of team fight. I mean, look at these heroes. <laughs> it just doesn't matter. Now, all throughout the game, Zinq is going to farm. Basically, if nothing is happening, he's never smoking anyone. He's not the one setting up any plays. And he really shouldn't. Just like, if your team is AFK, calm down and farm. Like, you scale extremely well. The reason why mainly comes down to the fact that your innate gives you item cooldown reduction. So for every three intelligence, you get one cooldown reduction, only on items. On your spells, you refresh them and rearm. It doesn't apply. So basically, the like whatever item you decide to buy, Solar Crest and Glimmer is generally what you're going to buy. They just have lower cooldown. Um, rearm doesn't rearm items anymore. This is something to keep in mind about the new Tinker. People forget that because most people aren't Tinker players. Rearm does not work on items at all. It's only your innate, right? And this is fine because the innate's really strong. Generally, in the mid game, you're going to have about 30% CDR on very powerful items. Now, I'm going to ask you guys a very interesting question. Have you ever watched a position four hero walk into the middle of Team Spirit and not die? Five heroes? Have you ever seen that five heroes surround a position four and he just walks it off? Well, that's what Tinker does. He doesn't even have defense matrix on himself as this happens, but he pops March, drops a laser, clicks his E, glimmers himself, and now he has 600 barrier. He's in March, so he's healing for 45 per second, which is actually 30% more now because of Locket. So it's actually 60 per second. He has a 20 Locket, so he's not even close to dead. They Ice Path him, they give Vision, and he's full HP. Just walks it off. I mean, now, as the fight continues on, he pops two Matrix, and this is pretty cool because now if the clock goes in and he gets stunned, it only lasts for 60% of the duration because this defense matrix, if it's on them, gives 40% sash resist, right? So heroes that frontline are way more tanky, like way more tanky. Okay, so a couple other things I'd like to talk about now, items and talents. So for the talents, at level 10, you take March of the Machines duration. At 15, you take the defense matrix absorb. At 20, you take Keen Convoyance channel time. And at 25, you take Rearm grants bonus magic resist. Sometimes the AoE laser is kind of cool. You can like eventually scale into the game with like Ags and Aether, you can just become a core. It's totally practical because this hero farms really fast, but it just depends. You have to feel how the game is going. And in terms of items, I like what he does here. Double Null is very important. The Holy Locket very important just for amping heal bots. After that, I think Solar Crest tends to be much better than Glimmer because of what it actually gives you in terms of stats. It gives you a mana pool, like a pretty big mana pool, just to show you guys like Glimmer obviously doesn't give any mana, where Solar Crest gives 300 mana and four all stats. So, and this hero has severe mana problems. So definitely a big fan of Solar Crest over the Glimmer, but he's obviously much more afraid of magic damage this game for his team, right? The enemy team has a Pugna, Puck, uh, Jakiro and Darks here, and the Monkey King isn't exactly online yet. And I believe that is why he opts for a Glimmer here. But if the game is like mixed damage, I would lean towards the solar if I have the choice. Yeah, and believe it or not, the remainder of the game, your gameplay is clicking W and casting E as much as possible. Like just keep clicking your E. It's a 15 second duration. So it's really, really long. You can put out multiple of them at the same time in a fight. And then you just go base, click W, E, and then rinse repeat. And if the team fight breaks out, you click your glimmer. <laughs> And that's it. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding. That That is literally it. That is all you have to do. Don't frontline, don't laser. Like, just don't laser. If you use laser, guys, I'm literally going to hunt you down. I will hunt you down in real life. I will come find you for using laser. I will make sure you never use laser again. All right, and to end off the video, we're going to look at the last team fight, last major team fight of the game before this game is just basically completely over and they can't kill anyone. I mean, that, that's already the case, but okay. Team fight breaks out. It's not looking too good. Clock's dead. Tinker's getting gone on. Oh, no. I have 2,000 health. He gets his W off. Wait, no, did he even get his W off? No, he didn't. <laughs> so, so this is like almost worst case possible. I just, sorry, I just want to play it. I, I think he didn't. Okay, so he E's himself in base, and this is actually very important because it's a 445 barrier. And now if he gets gone on, for instance, if he gets silenced, it just doesn't last very long. And that's what happens here. He gets silenced and it looks terrible, but because it's 40% status resist on the silence, He's able to get off his march much faster than he would have otherwise. On top of that, he's Crimson Guard and Piped, 
And, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's full HP. As the march goes out, it's going to continue to heal his whole team. Sand King is full HP. Lean is full HP. He has a 20 locket. He hasn't even used it yet. His Glimmer's back up. He just gave the Lina another 700 barrier. His Knolls have doubled, so now he has a 1500 mana pool. And uh, yeah, Tinker's support's broken, guys. If you didn't believe me, hopefully this video has convinced you. It's uh, very, as I said, very straightforward. Like, it's the easiest Tinker has ever been able to be played. This hero is ridiculously straightforward. Um, for his next item, he goes Greaves, which obviously has a ton of synergy with Locket. I love that. Gives you a dispel against Puck this game as well. And um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one, and I'm out. And that's all, but remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website, where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below, and I'm out. Peace.